Hey, thank you for taking time to watch this sermon. We have prayed that you'd be blessed by it. Uh, we want you to know, too, we believe that this is really supplemental uh, to your, your experience in the life of a local church. But if you're here in the Dallas area, we hope you'll come and join us and be with us for worship. We pray this blesses your life and you're drawn closer to Christ as a result of this message. I want to ask you this question. Just, just really, you know, I'm not going to presume upon anybody in here that you too are a believer or that you've come to a point where you've received Christ. But I want to ask you, how many of you would say there was a day when I asked Christ to come in my heart and with all that I understand about that, I believe that He was the Savior of the world and he, he is my personal Savior. And I've received that gift. I'm a Christian and I seek to follow Him. How many of you, raise your hand, if you say, that's me. That would be me, okay? All right, now, here's the question I want to ask you. Knowing what you know, that eternal life has come to you in Christ, you believe that to the core of your being. When's the last time you shared that good news with someone that you know? See, we've entered into this month of love. And by the way, Valentine's Day is coming up, guys. Just, that's free. I just wanted to tell you that. Just be ready for that. But, um, but, but we're talking about the greatest love that we've ever known, right? And that we've been called to love others, but, it, but it's our confession. It's not simply our lives, you know, that we're going to present before others. I think Sam Holm has said recently, uh, you know, soup is great to give people, you know, soup kitchen and such. Soup never saved anyone. Uh, only the gospel, Christ alone can save. And so we need to learn how to share this faith that we have out loud. We need to talk about it. So what we're going to do today is continue uh, this discussion that we've had around different styles. What I'm trying to do is set you free to realize that you don't have to be you know, an evangelist. You don't have to have a, a doctorate in theology. All of us can be a part of the conversation and lead people to Jesus. Every one of us. See, sharing the gospel, this is the beauty of the church. It's a team sport. It's like a, a, a golf bag, we've said, you know. If the ball is the gospel, we're seeking to get it into the hearts of people. Uh, it's not our doing, of course, but we all are different clubs along the way. Some of us are drivers, maybe a more direct approach. Some of us a little more finesse, you know, over in the rough or getting people out of trouble. We want to serve them and help them in our interpersonal relationships. We, we have different ways, and all of us can be a part of the process in people's lives. So I want you to turn to Colossians chapter 4. And um, I've noted that I, I felt this is a lot more like teaching than preaching. There's a little bit of a distinction. So we're going to be very practical today as we teach you all, each of us, how we can share our faith. We've noticed that uh, or noted that there's a spot on our website where you can go. And uh, I hope that you've gone to that link where you can take a little quiz. Uh, I know that last week, I think, was that in the late hour? We tried to do that here. I had a technology fail. But, um, so you have to go there yourself. Go do that. I think too many people online. But go and do that yourself. You'll discover your own style among six that we're talking about. And then you can kind of lean into that and learn more about how then to, uh, to get involved. All right. So Colossians chapter 4, verses 5 and 6, been a central uh, verse for us, two verses. The first one, verse 5, says this. Walk in wisdom toward outsiders, making the best use of the time. See, we need to be wise, always be aware. That's the first thing. I know through this time I've had my spiritual antennae up, looking for opportunities more than more than usual. And that's what I'm trying to do is get to get to challenge you to, to know this: that, that you've never locked eyes with someone for whom Jesus did not die. Every person you know. And there's not a person that's too far away from God. You, you, God has not given up on them. And you can continue to love them, continue to pray for them. And then in verse 6, he says, let your speech always be gracious. So look at that. There's something we speak, right? And it's full of grace, seasoned with salt, so that, here it is, so that you may know how you ought to answer each person. Now, we're going to look at the first part of that. We've been talking about that really last week for us to be gracious. Uh, you have a particular seasoning of your own that is unique to you. God's wired you in a certain way. And then today we're going to talk about how we ought to answer people. I want to give you some simple ways to share the gospel, which have helped me, because going into it, then you're not as, as fearful, I guess. Sometimes it's awkward because I don't know where this is going to go. 
um, and I don't have all the answers, and I want to just set you free today. You don't have all the answers. You don't need to have all the answers. I don't have all the answers. What we can do, uh, you're going to hear this a couple times today, is this. We can listen well. How many know we need more believers that know how to listen well today? You know, through the years, and some of you know, I have, you know, I got a doctorate in really apologetics, so that's kind of been my passion for lots of years. But what I've learned, and it's really happened over the past many years, I've been in ministry, uh, the greater apologetic uh, or, or enter into those kind of conversations is to listen. Listen. And if we would model that for people, that would stand out nowadays, right? Too many people are not listening. We're just speaking, and we're not listening well. So here's what I want to do. I want to ask you the question again. What is your evangelism style? All right. So we're going to walk through these six again. Uh, I want you to see how you land um, in this. So uh, check this out. What is your evangelism style? Now, we've said that a lot of people really think, you know, well, I'm not Billy Graham, right? I wish I was more like him. He's reaching, has, has reached a lot of people in his lifetime in ministry. I'm not the televangelist. Don't want to be that guy. So we think that, that I'm neither. You know, I can't be one and I don't want to be the other. So we land in the middle thinking I'm not an evangelist. And that's where a lot of us are. Or I should say, functionally, we live that way. I'm not, and you're, what you're saying is you're not an evangel. You're not a, a good news teller is what you're saying. I don't, I, don't, I don't share good news with people. That's what you're saying. And so what we're trying to help you see is that there are different styles. You can see them there on the screen. Uh, and you find yourself there. And we've been very practical, pragmatic in the way that, um, that we do this. And so uh, we have there the direct style. We've said that that's kind of like a Billy Graham or someone. We, you've seen maybe athletes. Some might say Tim Tebow. You know, is kind of kind of pretty bold about that. Uh, Chance the Rapper. Anybody? Um, I mean, that's pretty bold, right? Kind of brought church to the Grammys. Uh, I don't watch the Grammys. I don't have five hours in, in my life, but but I've watched some highlights of that, and uh, I've known about Chance the Rapper. For a while, but man, he and uh, Kirk Franklin, who is, by the way, at Concord Church, our, you know, our sister church is where he is uh, as a member, but man, they brought church um, to, uh, to the Grammys. Real bold uh, in his, uh, in his, in his you know, faith and glory to God and all the above. So very clear, very direct, straightforward. Um, how many of you, I'm curious, how many of you came to Christ through a direct style? Someone just said, here's the gospel and here it is, and you need to receive it or not. How many came to Christ that way? Yeah, lots of us did. You know, where maybe it was a sermon that, bam, here it is, or a, back in a youth, you know, kind of day or revival or something. Uh, and then the other one we talked about was intellectual. Okay, so this is where you have people who are, who are apologists who are, you know, uh, in the know and can talk in, in, in real intellectual terms. I think of people, you know, I think Tim Keller probably falls in this category if you read much of his stuff. William Lane Craig is another one. Um, N.T. Wright is a theologian these days. There's lots of them. Josh McDowell has become kind of one of those guys, or, or Lee Strobel, who we had here recently. And then the others are, we're going to look at two others, testimonial and interpersonal today. Then we're going to dive into invitational and serving, all right? So um, I want us to look at testimonial and, and uh, I was gonna, I'm going to have an opportunity to, um, to share with you, just uh, kind of diagram for you some ways that we can share the gospel in a real simple way. But I'm going to tell the guys right now a little, a little, um, little, um, little problem with our telestrator. It says uh, connecting to, so it's not there. So if somebody wants to come help me there, if not, we'll just walk through it, talk through it. Um, but let's look at the testimonial one. The first one, now the, the biblical example of this is the blind man. Uh, I don't know if you know that story. He's in John chapter 9. Uh, you could turn there, in fact, real quick uh, as Tim comes up. Thanks, Tim. I'm not technologically savvy enough to pull that off. So uh, in, in John 9, and I'm not going to take time to walk through that, but the story is in John 9 that the man, uh, he was born blind. You remember the story? Jesus comes and he heals him, and he heals him on the Sabbath. So all the religious leaders of the day, they're not real hyped about the fact this man was born blind, and now he sees but instead, they, they're coming after him. You know, let's look at the scriptures and see if he did this right. I think it's the Sabbath. Don't know what he's up to. You know, and so they came after him, and they come to the guy. They come to his parents first, and they say to him, uh, or to the parents, they say, was he born blind, really? And they're like, uh, yeah, he's our son. Yeah, he's born blind. Is that really your son? Uh, we think we know our son. And yes, that's him. Um, and then they say, hey, you can talk to him. 
because they were kind of afraid, actually, of all these Pharisees coming around. And they say, you can talk. So they throw their son under the bus, I guess. Talk to him. Don't know. And so they go and talk to the son. And the son says, you know, yes, this is, it happened. Yes, I was, I was born blind, now I see. And, um, and they say, well, was the man a sinner? Or was he not? Um, and he goes, I don't know. I don't, I don't know all the answers. This is a great story. I don't know all the theological you know, underpinnings or, or answers. What I do know is I was blind. You remember this? And now I see. And that, you know, that's my story. I'm sticking to it. That's all I know. And in the same way, this is true about all of us. This is really all of us have, you know, can be at points, any point, one, any one of these styles. But that one is, that's all of us. I mean, if you're here and you like, uh, Jeff, I don't know what to say. I don't enter into conversation with people because uh, I'm afraid. I don't know. Listen, if you've accepted Christ, you know what to say. And the beauty of that is no one can argue with your story. They may say that's not my story, but you can share your story. But you know what I've discovered as well? The best way to go about that is to ask them their story first, because that informs you on how to enter into your story, and it'll help you understand, how can I go at this? Uh, Because, again, this is not a program. I know it feels this way. It's not. We're simply trying to give you some practical teaching on how you can do this. Um, So the testimonial style, these are people who like to share their story. Uh, I, have had, I had someone tell me this week, well, I don't really have a, I don't really have a great story. Um, I'm, like, I'm like, wait, wait, you came to Christ, right? You know, you have a story. I mean, I can say that. I met with a, a young gal this morning. We're going to baptize in a bit. Uh, she's nine years old. I said, I was nine when I accepted Christ. And uh, wow, uh, I was nine. And I, I can have this Baptist testimony, you know. I grew up in the church nine months before I was born, you know, I was there. And, and then I... <laughs> I had parents who loved me and brought me up in the church. I came to faith at nine years old. Then I doubted my salvation right about 13. And I was like, whoa, this is new. And I had people around me who said, um, no, 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 you're just coming to greater understanding of what you did when you were nine. It's not how good you are. It's what Christ has done for you. And so it's just, you know, that. And I praise God for that. That's my story. And, and, and some say, well, I don't have this incredible story. Listen, you were dead in your sin, and you now have come, come to life because of Christ. That's a story. That's an amazing story. Because the story in the end is not our story. Our story's never saved anybody. It's his story, right? And so the great verse, I love this, around this particular style, is we proclaim to you what we have seen and heard. This is 1 John 1, 3. You can see it there so that you also may have fellowship with us. And our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son. So you see, again, this doesn't mean that you have some incredible story. Sam Holm is testimonial style. And so is Sam uh, Silva, who preaches over in our Espanol service. So First and Second Samuel, both of them have, have, the, testimonial, have the testimonial style. And, um, and it's not because they have this incredible story. Sam just loves telling stories. He's always the one saying, we've got to tell more stories about how people came to Christ. How many of you would say, or you took, the, took a little quiz and you said, that's, that's me, that's, that's, I lean that way. Anybody? Testimonial style. Yeah. So several of you. See? And what you're going to discover is across the board, we all have a different style. It takes all kinds of believers to reach all kinds of, of unbelievers, uh, non-Christians. Okay? It takes all kinds of Christians to reach all kinds of non-Christians. I think of people who have testimonies, like a Josh McDowell who went from an atheist to, to being a believer. He's going to be here May 5th, by the way, to speak at our church as part of a uh, weekend. Abraham Sarkar is in our church, who uh, was a former Muslim who, like many, had a dramatic dream, a radical story. But that happens over and over again. Uh, and he tells his story of how he came to faith in Christ after he woke up from this crazy dream. But I want to challenge you with this. One of the greatest ways that you can share your testimony, if you've not done this, without even sharing a word, hardly, without even speaking, is if you've come to faith in Christ, to be baptized. That's the greatest way you can present your story, the gospel story, his story. And if you've not yet been baptized, we want to encourage you to do so. You can be a part. I always tell the baptism candidates, you'll preach the greatest sermon, better sermon than I will today. And you'll hardly say a word. And you can do the same. If you've not been baptized, please come talk to us after the service. We'd love to do that. If you've received Christ, we'd love to help make that happen.
and put you in the, on the platform to share your story with the world. The next one, and, and the last one we'll look at today, is interpersonal. Uh, we use Matthew here as an example. Uh, interpersonal, uh, we find in Luke uh, chapter 5, verse 29. Matthew comes to Christ, and then he simply has what we call a Matthew party. He just has his friends come over to meet Jesus. He, he's interpersonal. He has all these friends, these tax-collecting sinners. And you know what I've noticed is that new believers are often the ones that can reach unbelievers a lot better than those of us who've been believers for a long time. We start to drift away from our unbelieving friends because we don't, we don't love them. We're not like Jesus. We're not friends of sinners. We sequester ourselves, and we don't find ourselves in front of people who do not think and believe like we do. And that's why, again, this week was such a gift for me. It was just a great time to love and to be loved by our friends from other faiths. So 1 Corinthians 9, 22, it says, To the weak I became weak, to win the weak. I have become all things to all people, so that by all possible means I might save some. By all possible means. You know, in, in, in our church, we need to constantly lean towards uh, whatever it takes that we might position ourselves to reach more and more people who are far from God. And that's becoming more and more difficult, uh, particularly in a church like ours, where we've got to decide we're going to change. We're going to do whatever it takes to reach unbelievers. And that's a hard thing for us to do. I have a friend who's a pastor of a church in South Africa. I've been to his church where... Um, they run on a good day, probably 150 folks or so, maybe 100. But years ago, they looked around uh, their vicinity and their area, and the AIDS pandemic has just uh, spread throughout this entire area of South Africa. And there are um, these settlements all around where people live in great poverty, and, uh, and many of them have AIDS. And so the church decided, you know what? We're going to turn our church, our facilities that God's given us, and we're going to turn our church into an AIDS clinic. And so what they've done is they, they meet, again, about 100, 150 people on a Sunday. But they serve about 2,000 people through the week who are struggling, either have AIDS or family members who have AIDS. They have, they, they have medication that they go and take into the villages and to places where people are ill. They have a, a center where people can die with dignity and care and the love of Christ. Because this church said, you know what? We're going to do whatever it takes to reach people. So they go out into the, into the city and around into these uh, settlements, and they share the gospel with people who have been impacted by the AIDS uh, pandemic. I wonder if we're willing to do whatever it takes as a church family to reach the lost. How about this? If you're willing to, to do whatever it takes to reach your friends for Christ. First uh, Thessalonians 2.8, it says, So being affectionately desirous of you, in other words, because we love you, we love you so much, we're ready to share with you. He says, we were, this is, this is Paul speaking, we were ready to share not only the gospel of God, but also our own selves, our very lives we shared with you. Because you had become very dear to us. Isn't that sweet? I love that. I want you to think about friends or family you have. Are you loving them well first? Are you listening and are you entering into their lives? So regardless of how this goes, um, we know that we're first to lead with love. But we're also to share the good news. And here's what I want to do, just real briefly, to share a couple of ways that you can actually share the gospel. Because then in verse 6, it says this, Know how you ought to answer each person. You know, there's something very unique here. Uh, answer each person. How would we know? Listen first. Listen to them. And as you listen, you'll come to know their story then you can go about uh, certain ways, different ways. Now, the first way that I think is real simple is what I talk about often. You've heard me, if you've been around here much, is do versus done. All right, so that, you know, what's the difference between religion and Christianity or religion and the gospel? Well, one is do what you must do in order to get to God. The other is that Christ has done it all for us. It's finished. It's why he said on the cross, his last words, it's finished. And we can receive that as a gift from God. That is an intriguing conversation to enter into, and I have found that to be very effective. Um, the next one is what we would call the bridge illustration. Now, some of you know this one, and it's built on one verse, and you can take a pen out and you can write this down, but some of you know this. I'm going to give you two real quick. Uh, Romans 6, 23, for the wages of sin is death, right? But the free gift of God is eternal life uh, in Christ Jesus our Lord. Now, here's what I want you to see on our little screen here. Um, 
the, and you've seen this, have you not? It's a, it goes like this. It goes like that. It's like that. Let's see. I think we're good. Can y'all see this? There we go. There we go. Um, so we've got this bridge. Uh, there's a gap between us and God, right? You've seen this? So here I am. That's a really bad drawing of me. But I'm messed up. See, I need help. And so uh, I am centered. And then God is over here. And perhaps you've seen this. We try to get to God, right? But we cannot because the Bible says that, that sin has separate us, separated us from God, right? And so sin leads to death, ultimately, spiritual death, physical death. And so it says that the wages, hello, I've got a different screen. The wages of sin, I'm going back to it. That ain't going to work. All right, sorry, we'll get this figured out later. Y'all know the gap, though, right? The wages of sin is death, but the free gift on the other side, the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. So you draw this little you know, bridge across the way, right? And, and, and it's a real simple way to just share the gospel on a napkin. I've done this before. Another way that you can share the gospel is by simply three simple uh, circles. And you start, this one I love, you start with brokenness. And this is a great way to enter into conversation with people. Because a lot of people have trouble. They say, you know what's wrong in the world today? Is that uh, everything's jacked up. And, and I mean, a God that would allow this kind of thing to happen, I, I can't, you know, I just can't go there. I just, I can't believe in a God like that. I mean, my, my life, I'm struggling with, you know, depression or I'm struggling with this or that or I've been done wrong. And so you start with brokenness and you say, you know what? The world is broken, but that's not God's original design. So it goes like this. You just draw a circle broken. And then over here, there's another circle. There it is. And it's God's design, right? But the problem is that, see, it's because we have sinned against God that we found ourselves in this broken world. We too are broken. I'm broken. You're broken. And yet, he's not left us alone. That Christ has come, okay? And then the gospel is that Jesus came. He died on the cross for our sins. He rose again. And then it's through repentance and belief. It's through faith that we come and God restores us back to his original design. And then we go back into the world to help bring about restoration and love. Bringing his design through us into a world that needs us to speak into their brokenness and to help uh, to help love them in a way that would honor God. So here's what I want us to do as we close our time, just to remember that Colossians 4, 5, and 6, let's all say it together. We're going to share in a beautiful time together before we close, a time of worship and remembering the gospel. Let's read this together. Walk in wisdom toward outsiders, making the best use of the time. Let your speech always be gracious, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how you ought to answer each person. All right? I want to challenge you today. Real simple ways. You might find a waiter or a waitress. I heard this story this week uh, on our Wednesday night class. Just one who says, uh, Don, he says, you know, I just ask a waiter to say, hey, we're going to pray here in a sec. And is there anything we'd like to pray for you if we could? And uh, this past week, this happened that the waiter said, Wow. Uh, I had two friends last Friday night that, were di that died in a car accident. And I mean, this guy just, and he, and he came and just kind of came in and they just started speaking into that and blessing him and praying for him. And, and you enter into those spiritual conversations and he was so encouraged. I had a gal tell me this week about how uh, her, the gal that does her nails um, at the nail salon that she loves when she comes. She told her, I love it when you come because you always tell me how I can how can be closer to Jesus, this um, woman who doesn't know the Lord. And it's, it's just a great time. Kind of captive audience. I probably need to go to the salon. I, I, <laughs> I, don't, I don't do that. But um, it's a great place. And so there's a lot of ways. But I want to encourage you again. Listening, listen, listen, listen. And you can go from there. The Spirit will lead you. So I'm praying that we'll have opportunities this week. I know that you will. So here's what we're going to do as we close our time. Uh, I want to challenge you towards some very practical steps where as we talk about loving out loud, we've said that we're praying for one person uh, at one o'clock uh, every day for one minute. And we're praying that the Lord will guide them and lead them uh, to, to join us. Look for opportunities to ask them to come and join us for Easter. People have said, you know, can I pray for more than one? We've said, no, no, you can't. Um, that's a joke. But uh, we, also want you to, we also want you to tell your story. Um, and we want you to do this. You can write this number down 
and just say, hey, I discovered my style is this, and I have an opportunity to use it this way. And it's just entering the spiritual conversation and just talk to us. You know, let us know. You can leave a message, and, um, and we want to hear your story, okay, along the way. It'd be cool to share those stories. So you just call the number and say, I took the survey, a little survey. My style was this, and I had opportunity to use my God used me in this way, all right? doesn't have to be a big dramatic story. We'd love to hear about that. But all of this is because of the gospel. It's because of all that Christ has done for us. Thank you for taking time to watch this sermon. If you would like more information about our church or following Jesus, please go to our website, pcbc.org, or contact our church offices. We hope to see you next week at church.